Hello, and thank you for choosing Colorado Time Systems for your aquatic timing needs. We hope this video will help you keep your equipment clean and accurate for many years to come. Cleaning the amp connector. Use the isopropyl alcohol and toothbrush to remove any chemical residue that has adhered to the contacts. Colorado Time System uses 5 volts for our signal path. It does not take too much of a physical impediment to diminish the signal strength. Dip the toothbrush into the alcohol. Remove excess from the toothbrush with a light shake. Brush the amp connector until you see a clean, shiny surface. Repeat this on the amp connector on the back of the timer. By waving your hand over the newly cleaned surface, you will evaporate the excess alcohol. The TPMD is the most valuable tool you should have. It is designed to test all Colorado Time Systems products used in a swim meet. The red button on the bottom is the on button. The TPMD will shut off automatically after 45 to 60 seconds. Keep this in mind when conducting multiple tests in sequence. By the time you get to lane 3, it will probably shut off and therefore not show a reading, which could give a false test. You will note the numbers below the light bar. These numbers are the volts being read by the meter. When the cable harness or wall plate to timer cable is connected and the timer is turned on, you should read 5 volts. If you have cleaned the pods and are getting less than 5 volts, the metal in the pods may be oxidizing. This oxidizing process may be caused by time, or in case of deck-mounted deck plates, the cleaning agents used to clean your deck. Cleaning your wall plates. Since your wall plate comes in contact with airborne precipitates, you will use the alcohol, toothbrush, and pipe cleaners. Clean the amp connector as shown before. Use the pipe cleaners to clean the walls and contact points in the diving judging terminals. You will also use the pipe cleaner in the start and speaker pods. Replacing a dual banana plug. To replace a dual banana plug on your push button, touchpad, start jumper, speaker, speaker jumper, or relay judging platform jumper, you will need a pair of wire strippers, small screwdriver, waterproof adhesive, and your TPMD. The first thing you will do is cut the old dual banana plug off. Strip the outer cover one inch back from the end. Remove the paper or fiber filler. Then strip off the outer cover of the black and white wires one quarter inch from the end. Twist the wire so it will slide into the termination posts. Slide both wires through the guide. Be sure to push the casing through the guide as an extra strain relief. Using a screwdriver that will not scratch the sides of the pods, loosen the set screws. The set screws can be loosened to a point that they can fall out. Be careful to cover the holes so the set screws are not lost. Slide the twisted metal of the black wire into one hole and the twisted wire of the white into the other. Be sure you only have bare wire in the set hole for a complete contact. It does not matter which wire goes in which hole. There is a tab on one side that reads ground. You may always want to dedicate one color to that side for consistency sake. Tighten the set screws down tightly. Use your waterproof adhesive to cover the top and bottom of the set hole to extend the life of the exposed wire. Place a dab of waterproof adhesive on the guide hole as a strain relief for the cord. Test the item with your TPMD. Connecting a relay judging platform. Insert the RJPL dual banana plug into button A pod. Then plug the backup button into the top of the RJPL plug. This is called piggybacking. Placing touchpad brackets and touchpads. The best way to place the touchpad bracket is to have one on each end against the side wall. Then place the center of the remaining brackets at each lane line. This will form one large unit that will not move laterally. A touchpad lifting up on a turn is simply a result of an upward force by the swimmer during the turn. If your pool has structural separations between each lane, place the brackets against the vertical structure so no lateral movement will occur. Placing and removing a touchpad. CTS recommends that two people perform the touchpad placement removal in the pool. One person will gather the cord into one hand so the dual banana plug will not catch on a poolside item and compromise the cord seal at the touchpad. If one person is placing the pad, make sure to have the cord gathered up into one hand. 
Before the pad enters the water, line up the turn cross on the touch pad with the turn cross on the pool wall. Place the bottom edge of the touch pad against the wall at a slight angle. While sliding the touch pad into the water, run the back of the touch pad straight down the wall. This will create a surface tension between the touch pad and the wall that will aid in its stability. Once the touch pad has been placed in the pool, gather up the excess cord and neatly coil it under the starting block. Velcro tabs are very handy to use to keep your timing system cables out of the traffic lanes and away from exiting swimmers. When placing backup buttons, be sure to have enough slack for the backup timer while keeping the cord away from the competitors. A tip for this is to place a Velcro tab on the side of your starting block and a tab near the button end. When not in use, your backup timers can hang the push button on the block. This will keep a more organized deck and avoid button damage from foot traffic. Relay Judging Platform Placement Make sure to have control of your RJPL at all times until connected, so the RJPL does not slide into the pool. Undo the connecting straps and place the RJPL on the starting block. Attach the ends, pull the slack on the strap to a taut tension, then flip the clasp. To undo the clasp, simply pull downward on the strap to apply pressure to the underside of the clasp. When attaching the speed light cable, make sure the notches on the connection ends line up. Twist the coupler to connect. As you increase the items used for aquatic timing, the opportunity for cables and cords to become tangled or stepped on increases. We recommend placing all of the same items at one time and securing them with a Velcro tab or wire tie. This will aid in the replacement of a damaged item quickly without affecting any other items that are secured. Testing a touch pad. Touch pads are adjusted on site during your installation. If you have purchased a touchpad, please read the adjustment instructions inside the box. Once your touchpad has been adjusted to your altitude, you should not need to add or remove air unless your water temperature has changed 3 degrees or more in either direction. If your water temperature has changed 3 degrees or more, set all of your touchpads in your pool for 10 minutes. Remove one touchpad and add or remove air with your vacuum pump. Be sure to keep track of how many vacuum strokes or pump strokes you use to get your pad to the desired sensitivity. Then add or remove the same number of vacuum strokes or pump strokes on the remaining pads. This way, each pad will be set to the same sensitivity. This will avoid the one or two spare touch pads not being at the same sensitivity as the ones in the pool. If you were to need to replace a damage pad during the competition, you would have to take extra time to adjust it individually. Our touch pads are designed to react to a focused point of contact. You want your touch pad to react to a focused point of contact so it will not be activated by a swimmer's wake or wave. When using your TPMD, you want your touch pad to register to your fingertips hitting the pad like a swimmer's at the end of a race. If you spread your fingers and push water into the pad or apply a medium pressure with an open hand, the touchpad should not register. This will avoid a false reading due to a swimmer's wake hitting the pad. Please keep your TPMD handy during a meet to reconfirm that your touchpads are working properly during the course of a meet. If a swimmer does not hit the pad with the proper focused pressure, a hit may not be registered. This does not mean the touchpad is defective or damaged. 